So there's a fair bit of development going on next door. Can you give us an outline of the situation? Okay, well I've been here for just over 20 years and we had a lovely uh, four bedroom house next door to us for all that time until recently and now we've got a development going up next door, uh, four two storey units uh, that are going up next door and going up very quickly <laughs> by the looks of it. So take us through your objections and how you balance that with a pretty well recognised need for more housing. Well, I'm all for everyone having a, a roof over their head, of course, but uh, I guess the objections are the close proximity and the balcony that's going to be literally just over the, the top of my garden, the sun that I'm going to start losing, I presume, because of, of where it's been built. Um, there's a number of other things as well, but they're my main objections, and I think it would have been nice to have known about it before it actually started. So you say that homeowners can't have it both ways with intensification. What do you mean by that? Homeowners can't have it both ways. You know, they enjoy the capital gains. Supply and demand, if your location's in demand, if the unitary plan has changed the zoning, and you can now put five or six properties on your site, when, which was a single resident site, it's increased the value. So the owners are enjoying the increased value of their property, but then when someone builds next door, they get very frustrated because their neighbourhood is changing. But the fact is you can't have it both ways. You enjoy the capital gains because the location is de in demand, but then you don't want what's creating the demand to be implemented in your suburb. So, you know, you can't have your cake and eat it in this life. You have a story uh, from a Rosedale development uh, that has a bit of a lesson in it. Can you tell us about that? We had a circumstance where we were doing a high density, medium density development in a traditional suburb in Rosedale, traditional North, North Shore suburb where you have six or seven hundred square metre site with a single home. So we had an adjoining vacant piece of land. It normally would have been carved up into about 12 sections but all of a sudden there's a development going in of medium density and there's going to be 60 places built. So unbeknown to us, we started marketing the property. The first weekend of open homes in the Portacom suite and there's people with protest placards, not in our neighbourhood, you can't build here. We love this the way it is, it's been like this for 20 years, we don't want change. Go away, do it somewhere else. And the irony of this was two of the lead protesters were an elderly couple and they were front and centre complaining about this. Anyway, we ran the open homes and we carried on marketing the property and we signed up a young girl on the property, a single young woman, and she could buy one of the one bedroom entry level apartments. The first people that she ran around to tell were her grandparents. Grandma, granddad, I'm so excited. Guess what? I've bought a house right on the neighbourhood. I grew up here, I always loved coming here, sharing time with you and the family here. Now I can buy a property here in this location because I can find one I can afford. I never thought this could happen. And you know, from that day on, the grandparents never turned up to any of the protests. A lobby group which opposes all sales of farmland is questioning a real estate company's foray into China. Well, it should say all overseas sales of farmland. Harcourt's real estate says it's having problems getting buyers for top-end properties, and it's worth seeing if there's interest among the wealthy in China. Well, we'll hear from spokesperson for Save the Farms, Tony Boucher, in a moment. But first, the managing director of Harcourt's Cooper & Co., Martin Cooper, who told me from Shanghai about the sort of properties they're marketing. We've got quite a good collection of apartments. We have some beautiful coastal properties, some luxury homes for coastal waterfront properties. Uh, we have a number of rural properties uh, with, um, you know, five to ten acre blocks with a nice uh, established home. We've got commercial properties, some CBD Auckland properties, 
and some development sites. Why the Chinese? Is it simply that you've got the Shanghai Expo and there's, a, there's the ability to, to hook into the pavilion? No, I mean, the um, Chinese economy, we all know about it. It's um, growing at a phenomenal rate. Um, Chinese government's indicated that it's um, time to look at spending offshore, so they're freeing up those opportunities. And we already have a, a, in the vicinity of 150,000 Chinese people living uh, in New Zealand. So we thought with the focus on Expo, uh, John Key's initiatives, uh, New Zealand government with the free trade agreement, the desire to grow uh, trade between New Zealand and China by 2015 up to 20 billion, that um, it's going to be happening anyway. So let's take a good selection in New Zealand product over and uh, make some connections and uh, look at helping that process. Martin Cooper, can I come back to you there? Because, I mean, yes, does, 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 um, I, does what I he's saying so. upset you? I, I think it's a healthy debate. I think that it should be discussed. Um, and it's um, it's good maybe uh, this trip that we're doing might um, generate a bit, bit of focus in on, on that because uh, we're all New Zealanders. We all love the country, so we want what's best for the country. And I think it would be a healthy, healthy debate to... And, and something seriously we should study and make sure we make the right decisions for our country. But, um, hey, it's such a global place we live in now, the young people coming through. Um, it, they see it as our planet rather than our country, and um, it, it's something that we um, will have to figure out and, and do the right thing. So. I'd, I'd be very pleased to be in, in that debate and um, in that discussion, make sure we, we go in the right direction.